What is going on guys? Zero System here again. I am back for another review, this time of the Swordfish 2. I got this kit off eBay for $30. It's another Bandai kit, so I felt comfortable getting it because I felt it would be kind of similar to the Gunpla that I've been building. I came with three runners, including polycaps, and one more runner of uh, figures that came molded in the resin color. You can see them standing over there on the uh, right. I didn't paint them yet, saving that for a rainy day. It also came with a miniature figure of Spike, which you can see laying down, and then a fully painted one, which I do have inside the cockpit, which I will show you in a moment once we get to that portion uh, of the review. So moving on, uh, the manual it came with is very similar to what we see with the high-grade uh, Gunpla. It's well, one sheet, one side's in color, and it has a bunch of um, really awesome info about the Swordfish 2 that I wish I could read, but I can't. Um, and then the other side's black and white, it's got all the directions, and then it also has some pictures of the kit, I'll paint it up for reference. So there you can see the miniature painted spike, I painted those little cords yellow, um, and then he's wearing his suit, let me see if I can get the camera to kind of focus on that, he's wearing his little suit and tie, and um, he's got the black hair, painted that with a toothpick, kind of dabbed it on, and then I did uh, dab some skin color onto the uh, arm and face because the resin color was just kind of too um, like unnatural looking. So how this closes is these two come like that and then these two snap over the top and it all kind of comes together and then once it's all nice and secure it just kind of neatly fits right in there and then that closes over the top. And then it does get a little bit of a snap feature in there, so you can snap it down. And that is the um, cockpit feature with the painted spike. So it's pretty accurate. As you can see, this thruster has been moving around. Um, this thing moves back and forth. These two also come in and out. So does the top one. It's a little bit hard to move because I have the matte coat on there, so it makes it a little bit more sturdy. Um, this fin also moves in, in or up and down. Um, I didn't put the missiles on yet. It's kind of like a 99.9% .9 thing because, I don't know, I think it looks pretty cool as is. And um, the missiles, I ended up paint, painting them and not quite finishing. So I guess I'll save that, um, you know, for a rainy day, kind of like the figures. Because I don't know, I think without them it looks pretty neat. And I don't really remember them too much from the anime. Um, anyway, so um, I mentioned earlier some parts of this were kind of tricky to build. Uh, that includes mostly this part right here. Um, it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, eight pieces here, just in the just the red, not counting the gray. And um, the way it snaps together is all eight of those pieces come together into one assembly. So it's not like you can do one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have to do all eight of them uh, in the right orientation and then they all snap together. So if you miss a piece, it's a real pain to um, go back and unsnap that and try to get it um, how you want it to. So with that part, you know, definitely um, take your time, be careful. As well as these here, I didn't realize that um, the directions don't really, at least I didn't notice they didn't tell you that there's a mark here at the bottom for these little wheels you can put in. I don't have them in right now because I don't really like how they look, but um, I had mine upside down. So at the very end of my build, I had to go and take these all apart and reverse them and flip them. So I had these, I had, uh, the openings down there in the bottom so the wheels could attach. Um, so do pay attention to those. This build is a little bit more um, tricky than some Gunpla. Um, there's a little bit more things going on and um, it's just overall a, a different build and um, one thing that makes it pretty unique is that the uh, the wings do fold just like in the anime so let's see if I can go ahead and um, show you guys that before I jump into the um, weathering process I kind of went through for it so as you can see these wheels both come out there I have my painted a little bit to look like you know actual pistons with some bronze and some red um, but once those come out each of these wings come 
and fold up like so. I'm not gonna go all the way because I've had a few problems with this mechanism, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think others have though. Um, so it could just be a problem with how I constructed mine. I know that's not quite close, but I don't like that mode anyway, so I usually have it wings open. Um, and that does come out a little bit more, so you can fold it. It should go all the way, but um, I don't really want to fuss with it too much because I really like how mine looks with uh, the wings and the wheels up. I eventually want to get it onto a, um, a stand, probably like a Gundam stand, and have it look like it's in, it's in flight. So that's pretty much it for the actual model kit. Um, one more thing, the gun does come out just like in the anime. It comes out, it turns, it spins. Um, there's a lot of really cool scenes with Spike kind of banking the plane and the, the, uh, that gun pivoting. So um, one last thing too is this, this model kit was really fun to panel line. I wish there was more panel lines on it, but um, the color it was, it was kind of like a fluorescent -y red, which a lot of people do complain about, and I wasn't fond of it at first, but the panel liner showed up very nicely on there, and it really um, dug deep into those uh, lines and really made it stand out and helped the weathering effect overall. So for the weathering, I went ahead and used Tamiya Weathering Master C, D, and then I dry brushed on um, X1 and X11. Not in that order though. So what I did first was I took a, um, first I did some actual chips in the wings here and here with a, just like an exacto, just kind of chipping in uh, randomly. And then I went and filled in those little kind of chips. I took a toothpick, dipped it in the black X1, kind of went over those, filled those black, and filled the chips in with the black. And then um, once that dried, I just took uh, a very, very dry brush. I have it right here. And as you can see, this brush is like very, um, it's very coarse. So I just do a little bit of silver on that, you know, just literally dab it, and then dab it all over the paper towel to get like 99.9% .9 of it off. And then I went around and just kind of lightly um, dry brush the ship. And this mostly came out um, on these gray pieces here where you can see, you know, that looks like actual, um, you know, damaged or scratched up metal, which is really the effect I was going for because I wanted the swordfish to look like it's been through a bunch of you know, a bunch of different atmospheres and, and space and things like that. And um, the tricky part here was the back. I think the back really wasn't that effective. I think it'd be a lot cooler if I kind of like cut out the four um, triangle shaped panels in there, maybe try to fit an LED because there is definitely enough room in there. As you can see, it's a pretty big uh, piece in the back. I'm sure if you were really good with LED, you could fit something in there, do something really dope. I'm not quite there yet, but uh, maybe one day. Um, so yeah, that's about all I did, and then I took the Tamiya Weathering Master. Once that was all dry, I took the Weathering Master um, C and D, and um, did like some streaks with the with the uh, oil stain, streaks on the wings, streaks over here, uh, around the cockpit, and then I took the um, the actual silver from the C and kind of did some of the edges to make oops to make it look like. Um, there was paint kind of wearing off the edges and things like that. And um, I think it came out really well. I think it looks really effective. It looks really realistic. And um, I'm really happy with it. I think it'll look um, even cooler once I get it up on a base. So overall, um, oh yeah, and one last thing too, is I did give it a good proper matte coat with some Mr. Hobby top coat. Um, I think that was the key in really bringing down that fluorescent red color and making it seem like more of like a, um, you know, more of a dull, uh, you know, more of the red I'm going for, which is not that bright red, which is much more dull and um, darker and battle damaged. So I give this kit an A. Um, it's a it's a really good kit. It's a, it's really fun to build. The only problem was was some of the assembly was just confusing for someone who is kind of new to modeling so if you um if you want like a challenge or something different from the gundam kits then i definitely recommend this but if you're brand new to the hobby then 
I might hold off on this one for just a little while until you get your skills up or whatever. Um, with that being said, though, it, re it requires very minimal paint and glue. So, like, if you're looking for a kit where you don't want to paint it, maybe you want to paint some parts of it, but you want to get into maybe, like, figure painting or doing small details, or if you want to um, pick up a kit just to like practice weathering on, I would say this is a good kit to get if you can handle the building process, which isn't really that difficult besides this back piece. Um, but if you're looking for a kit like that, then this kit really is awesome because you can go to town weathering on it. And um, I think some people will say I weathered it too much, but I think it looks awesome. That's how a Swordfish 2 should look. It's beat up, it's been through battle, it's been through re-entry, it's been through atmosphere, it's been through space. and. Um, that's Spike, and he goes everywhere, and he's a badass. So um, that really is about it for this review. Um, I recommend to get a stand for it. There is a piece down here that accommodates a stand. I'm not sure which one, um, but I'm going to get like a... I'm just going to modify like a Gundam stand and try to just, I don't know, fit it in there somehow. Um, so yeah, and that's really about it. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, I will see you guys on the next review. Peace.